We're talking about the, the, the Jeff Sessions confirmation hearings. Tomorrow they begin in earnest with five other positions, including Rex Tillerson, the ExxonMobil former CEO who is up for Secretary of State. His ties to uh, Russia, to Vladimir Putin, to Iran, to Iraq, to business dealings there, all likely to come up And what is slated to be a one-day hearing, but these things can easily spill into multiple days. Uh, let's get the read on that with John Hoffmeister, the former fellow of President. John, uh, a lot of people are saying, if you think they're, they're going to be tough on Sessions, you should see what they're going to do to Tillerson. What do you think? Well, I think that that reflects a misunderstanding of what a CEO of a major oil company does, because there is absolutely no foreign engagement, in my judgment and in my experience, that doesn't involve working through the U.S. Department of State as the bellwether of your own government. So if you go to Russia, if you go to Iraq, if you're part of a, an operation in Africa, you will have briefed and you will have taken advice from the United States Department of State because that helps you and the Department of State operates much like a chamber of commerce on behalf of American companies in foreign countries. So there is a, a, a working together relationship that takes place between oil companies and foreign governments and the United States government, which everybody knows about. But uh, many people, uh, Everybody knows about it in the industry, I should say. Right. Many people in the public don't know that. Well, it becomes more of an issue to your point, I guess, when it involves a Republican. I've no one about it an eyelash when John Kennedy picked Robert McNamara, Ford Motor Company executive, to be his defense secretary. Or maybe they should have, or Vietnam wouldn't have happened, but who knows. Uh, but what I want to ask you about this particular case of Mr. Tillerson is his role Exxon played through a subsidiary. Uh, in, in business dealings with Iran. Now, I know it's a relative chump change in the scheme of thing, a $55 million enterprise and a contract with Iran for a company that made tens of billions of dollars in any given quarter, but it is going to come up, and whether he was flagrantly violating U.S. policy and sanctions against Iran, uh, we don't know, but uh, should it come up? Well, I can tell you in my own experience, uh, my former company had relationships with Iran, but as an American, I could have nothing to do with any decision associated with anything having to do with Iran. And there are ways within companies where you can operate under foreign subsidiaries without violating any law or contradicting any intent on the part of the U.S. government, where Americans are completely out of the decision-making process because it would be a violation of the law for an American to but be involved. But is it a violation so, of the law at all? Now, I, I understand you're, you're, you're delineating here. It's a multinational firm, ExxonMobil is. Furthermore, this is a very small little part of that business, but it is still violating, we are told, and again, this could all be disproven tomorrow, uh, U.S. sanctions against Iran at the time. Now, um, well, how does he then get out of that one? I think you have to look solidly at the facts of the case. Now, I don't have those facts in front of me, so I, I'm speaking beyond my depth to perhaps to say anything. That's where I live. But the reality, the reality is you have foreign subsidiaries operating within the laws of those subsidiary okay. companies and countries where Americans are not part of the decision-making process. All there right. are some fine lines of distinction, and that's what we need to understand right. and find out about. John, thank you very, very much. And I should distinguish here as well, folks, that Exxon is a humongous company, the largest in terms of revenues on the planet. Uh, so this is a more or less change that would be under a couch cushion. I don't want to trivialize it, but you can bet it's going to come up tomorrow.